So hello everybody. So my name is Alice Clement and I am a geophysics data manager at the UK Polar Data Center. And I'm presenting on how the UK Polar Data Center is supporting uh, data collection in remote environments. So I'm presenting on behalf of my colleagues, so I don't know everything on what I'm presenting, but I will try to uh, do my best. Um, yeah, so the UK Polar Data Center is part of the NERC Environmental Data Service, and it's based here at the British Antarctic Survey. So uh, the uh, UK Polar Data Center uh, coordinates uh, the management of polar data from UK funded uh, research, and it supports uh, researchers uh, in complying with national and international uh, data legislation and policies. So reflecting on the multidisciplinarity of polar science, we are covering all um, scientific disciplines. So we are uh, managing uh, marine, biological, space weather, geophysics, uh, ozone and meteorological data, as well as physical samples such as rocks or fossils. So when we talk about uh, data collection in remote environments, we need to overcome uh, several challenges. So we need uh, to, uh, we want to collect as much data as we can. So uh, we want to cover a lot of different disciplines. Uh, we need to work with uh, uh, quite limited bandwidth and connectivity and also uh, limited resources. Uh, we need to deal as well with a large range of sensors and we want to continue the long-term monitoring activities that we have here as a British Antarctic Survey. So to do that, the role of the Polar Data Center is to support data collection by uh, providing operational data management expertise and create uh, innovative uh, systems. So in this presentation, I will present uh, three examples. Uh, that showcase how the UK Polar Data Center is supporting uh, data collection in remote environments. So the first example is uh, uh, the collection of uh, biological data in small Antarctic uh, stations. Uh, then the second uh, example will be about the automation of data collection in one of our stations, which is called Halley. And the third uh, <laughs> example is about the automation of sensor data on board the Royal uh, Research ship called uh, uh, Sir David Attenborough. So on small station, uh, um, one activity that we are doing is collecting biological data, which are mainly uh, collecting manually uh, data regarding the wildlife. So it can be, like you can see on the picture, as a zoological field assistant who is uh, waiting, uh, counting, measuring, and collecting samples. So here on uh, Albatros. Uh, so the, historically, the data was kept in field books only, but uh, now we are trying to make sure that the data is also stored uh, on hard drives and uh, sets are then uh, brought back to the UK at the end of the season. But it's quite manual, so we want to automate a bit more this process. So uh, we are trying to work with the uh, BAS scientific teams, but also the engineering team here at BAS to uh, develop new systems to, to collect data. And so one of example is a waypoint. So at the top, you can see a uh, penguin, so it's on Bird Island. And so uh, uh, the, each uh, penguin is tagged, so we can uh, know which penguin uh, is going from the bridge, and we can count them. So this bridge is the only way the penguin have to go through uh, from the seaside to uh, the colony. And so this is a very good way for us to know how much food they have eaten because we can wait them before they go uh, fishing and when they come back. So also to improve uh, standardization of the uh, data, we are also developing uh, databases. And so there are uh, databases on the station and uh, we have also uh, created some um, Oracle uh, Apex application forms so that the, uh, the, the assistant can easily fill in the form and then the data is directly in the right format when it comes back. And it's uh, uh, following the recommendation from the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources. And then we can report back to them directly to their environmental uh, monitoring program. 
So here you have a graph, for example, of uh, the arrival of the chin strap penguins. Um, so uh, at Sydney station. And as you can see, we have sometimes some gaps. So in 2010 and also in 2012 and 2014. So it was when uh, the data assistant didn't arrive before the penguin. Uh, so uh, now we, uh, to avoid this data gap, um, we are trying to find new ways and also to add automation of some of the collection. So uh, now we are looking at having fixed cameras, but also to look at uh, uh, satellite images and also to add the counting of the of the penguin. We can look at also other platforms such as the drones. So now I will move on to uh, the data collection. Uh, so Holly is looking to where the red arrow is. So it's on the brand high shelf and it's not really stable. So we don't want to have the scientists uh, stay there during the winter. So we, uh, but we still want to keep the very high level data that we have collected so far and to keep the monitoring for the long term. Uh, so um, to do that, uh, we have totally automated the station. And so we have set up a micro trailing uh, power supply with automated peering system. And there is a data link to a suite of autonomous scientific instrument instrumentation. So uh, this project preserves uh, core science uh, data streams from Ali. So it includes meteorology and uh, ozone monitoring, uh, tropospheric uh, chemistry and climate, space weather and upper atmospheric observation, as well as glaciology of the broad ice shelf. But to do that, we have quite a complex uh, infrastructure. So we are working with six virtual machines. We have a data server uh, on site and a processing server to uh, automatically process some of the data. And then we have also a visualization and monitoring server. So on the top, you can see a Grafana dashboard. So this is to uh, follow uh, how well the data link is going. So uh, what is the speed of the data coming in? but also to look at uh, how well the um, shooting system is doing as well. And so the, here is a Raven uh, dashboard. So this is an in-house uh, uh, interface uh, that is uh, also showing some of the Nagios flag that is kind of saying whether or not uh, some of the system, uh, like the status of the system uh, on site. So now we can move on to uh, the next uh, kind of um, platform that we are working on. And this is the uh, Royal Research Ship uh, at Attenborough, or SDA for short. So it's one of the most advanced scholar research vessels in the world. So it's a big red ship with lots of sensors on it. So we have lots of sensors, for example, on the front mass, but also on the main mass, and also under the ship. So currently we are logging more than 500 data sensors per second from more than 60 underway uh, sensors. So uh, the data we are collecting includes position, attitude, depth, uh, met, volume, gravity, wind, uh, engine, and lab monitoring data. So uh, the sensor data are a large yeah, data logger called RVDAS that we are co uh, developing with uh, NOC. Um, and then the data are uh, inserted into a database and then we can visualize the data. So you have here a dashboard, so it's a graph and a dashboard that gives an overview of everything going on on the ship. So what we have overview dashboard, but also uh, some more specific dashboard for, uh, that we use to look at a specific instrument or uh, also for operational uh, purposes, such as when we are deploying an instrument, we can, can look at, for example, other which uh, operations um, and the depths, for example, which are quite useful for real-time um, information. But at the moment, the link, uh, the data link is not sufficient to uh, transfer all the data uh, automatically. So, but uh, new technology uh, brings new opportunities in supporting data collection in remote environments. And so um, we are looking into using uh, the starting collection uh, that could uh, highly improve uh, the data transfer, either from the station, but also from the ship. So as a conclusion, the UK for data passenger is a 
Uh, focal point for Arctic and Antarctica environment for data management. In the UK, we are supporting science in remote environments by providing operational data management expertise. And uh, technology and automation gives new opportunity to improve data quality in remote environments. And we have seen that uh, new technology, including satellites and federal uh, new systems such as drones, are increasingly uh, used to monitor also penguin, uh, monitor, uh, penguin population. So that's why I'm encouraging you to look at my poster. And if you are using drones, please fill in the survey. Uh, the code, the QR code is here, but uh, it's also on the poster. Thank you very much. Alice, it's very interesting to hear about your work. I should say on the slide, you need to switch now to the spotlight talks one, I think. Um, I was going to ask you mention at the end about the Starlink. So is that yeah. a kind of effort to sort of standardize the way that you do your comms from all of those different sensors and things, or is it just not so sure. to standardize everything? It's not really like because we are just trialing at the moment uh, the Starlink uh, link. So now we have one on uh, one of our main stations, so that is Vertera, and one on the ship. And so uh, it has to, like at the moment, it's more used for personal purposes because um, we can't rely on the link because it can drop out whenever and you can't really plan for rest. But we have also a V-side connection. But having the people, uh, the, like the people on the ship using the, uh, uh, the Starlink connection, uh, remove all that, um, the, all that, uh, yeah, all this from the visa that we can use only for scientific uh, purposes. So uh, then it's really to test how well the Starlink is doing. And uh, at the moment, we, it's still a, a test, but that could bring much more uh, data to be uh, collected and then transferred uh, kind of in real time here to Cambridge for anybody to look. Sounds good. And also, also thinking like in lots of well, it's sort of field work that people at CEH do. They can use like tablets and those sorts of things. But I guess in those, in their different, their different approaches you have to use in Antarctic conditions to. But so that you need equipment. to really have your gloves on, or you need to have equipment, or they can froze with the cold. So you need to have specific computers for this. So yes, sometimes it's not exactly the same setup, and uh, sometimes you think twice before going outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great.